Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Alliance of Independent Authors Advanced Self-Publishing Salon with me, Joanna Penn and Orna Ross. Hi, Orna. Hey, Joe. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Today is very exciting. We have a topic. We're talking about the rise of personal branding for authors in an age of decreasing social media impact. Very exciting. That's coming up soon. But first, we're going to do a little bit of an update on our writing, uh, since uh, we, we are writers too, not just talking about writing. So, Orna, what have you been up to in your personal writing life uh, since we last spoke, which was ages ago, it was in uh, early December? Yeah, it seems seems a long time ago. When was that? Um, yeah, lots of writing going on, as always, doing bits of poetry, um, but also more um, enormously coming to the end of a script that I've been working on for ages. And I was kind of struggling with that for uh, some time. And then at the end of last year, Joni Rogers, um, who is an ally member, and uh, I got together and she does a thing she calls plot whispering and she helped me to structure the script so it is now galloping towards the end which is brilliant and also revamping the go creative books uh, have just put out in print now the starter pack again with the new target the micro niche audience we were talking about uh, in the last salon and the creativist compendium which is also taking in as well as the creative life taking in creative entrepreneurship and creating creative works so yeah lots of different kind of topics at, at different levels what about you yeah, so both of us do fiction and non-fiction. And of course, so in December, I did three books out, came out in December. Um, the Healthy Writer, co-written with Dr. Ewan Lawson, which has just gone down incredibly well in the author community, especially with the themes of burnout and stress. Uh, so, and of course the new year, new year's resolution. So that's really good. And my own health has been better for as a result. So that's cool. Uh, Map of Shadows came out in December. And then this January, uh, I've just this week finished my script. So I've adapted uh, a script as well. Um, and I'm going on a course later this year. So uh, it's interesting we're both doing that. I think, and you use the word structure. And if people listening, you know, sometimes people think structure means you are hemming yourself in, but actually structure enables you to figure out what the hell you wanna say within your story. So I think, you know, we'll have, probably have to talk about lessons from screenwriting another time, but um, that's been cool. And then also I, I came out as Penny Appleton, the sweet Ooh, romance. You at last. <laughs> I know, so uh, me and my mum co-writing as Penny Appleton. We've also now got a picture on the Amazon page. My mum has agreed to mm. kind of put her face in the world and we'll be talking about personal branding uh, soon. So all of those things have been um, pretty significant, fiction and non-fiction. But of course, it's not just you, there is also the Alliance of Independent Authors. So what's been happening with Ally? Uh, what's going on? Always at this time of the year, we're in build up to London Book Fair. London Book Fair is probably the most significant live event that we do um, each year, especially now since um, BEA and Frankfurt Book Fair really have shown that they have minimal interest in authors. We've decided that we won't be um, attending either of those two fairs um, anymore. And we're looking for a big author um, conference to align with at the end of the year. But up here at the beginning of the year, it's London Book Fair. And, we're, and we always do a an online free conference for the Indies who can't make those big events, kind of bringing the event to them and also um, just uh, widening the reach uh, of, of what goes on in those places for authors. So we, we will be doing that again, but uh, we have been calling ourselves Indie Author Fringe. We're changing that because we don't feel that indie authors are fringe to anything uh, really anymore, if they ever were. And uh, it's now going to be called the Self-Publishing uh, Advice Conference to match our self-publishing advice um, center and blog and our another new publication that we're starting, which is our Self-Publishing Advice Portal and that's going to be a magazine which brings together the best of and the most interesting and most important trends of the previous quarter into one easy to digest, easy to read magazine and that will launch at the fair. Yeah, that is all super exciting. And things changing is a bit of a theme. Uh, as ever, we cover some news up front. It seems like, you know, the feeling at the end of 2017 was, well, I certainly felt things are stabilizing. We know the big players, uh, you know, 
we can run a whole business as indie authors and yeah things are stable and then like things have just gone off it's in the even in the last week it's so funny how many things have happened and i for one am really pleased because there's some big movers and shakers in the space so what's what stood out for you in terms of the um the latest news yeah it was really funny wasn't it it's like hubris don't say don't say things like that we'll show you um in the office space just doesn't stay still for long and that obviously is going to continue into 2018 big for me what's really big is the way in which um you and i are both big proponents of, of going wide as the most sustainable um business model long term despite you know the fact that we understand completely that a lot of indies make their money by a selective use of amazon exclusive and kdp select and, and all of that um it's very very much i think important to diversify in any business and in, in any um, walk of life, really. So yeah, um, it's interesting to see that other players have done some very interesting things. Apple iBooks, which is has long been kind of slightly moribund, is, is, seems to be really gearing up now, um, again, which is brilliant uh, because Apple does things, I think, that nobody else can do. And also for authors, it's it's a clear target market where it's not a race for the bottom pricing. It's uh, people are prepared to, Apple customers are prepared to pay more money. And, you know, like a higher quality book, I'm talking in terms of, you know, picture books and all that sort of stuff. So that's great. Kobo has just signed an interesting uh, agreement with Walmart in the US um, and lots of other things happening on the, on the going wide front. So for me, that probably long term is the most significant thing that has happened in January 2018. Yeah, so just to to round up there. So Apple is revamping iBooks. They're going to just be called books. <laughs> and I think what is more interesting is that they're going to be linking them with audiobooks. And I have long said, why the hell are they not on the same thing? I think they'll still be on different tabs, but at least there should be some relationship between the ebook and the audiobook, which will be amazing. As you mentioned, um, Rakuten Kobo going into Walmart with co branded Walmart Kobo e reading devices, ebooks, and audiobooks. Again, we're seeing, as we've been talking about for years, the rise of audiobooks maybe this year it will be the big year um also we've got google play has also launched audiobooks um which is interesting and i'm now using publish drive to get to google play i haven't really seen much going on there yet but i'm hoping that will um improve uh also we have barnes and noble relaunched nook press as barnes and noble press now interesting because i left nook press a while back uh, annoyed at their the way they shut at their international stores. But it's interesting that they're still kind of clinging on. I didn't expect that because I thought everything would just be winding down. So I thought that was quite interesting from a, are they even gonna fight for the US market? But I, I agree with you. I think iBooks and the Kobo, again, the Kobo Walmart thing is kind of crazy because I thought everyone had rolled over and said the US market is just Amazon. Um, I have my doubts as to how much Walmart readers will buy more than just blockbusters because that's what Walmart tends to sell. Um, a bit like WH Smiths in the UK, uh, Kobo is also a partner there. But I think what for the message for people listening is, it's not over. Like Amazon.com US is not the only game in town. And this will mean that there's more stuff going on. Uh, so yeah, pretty exciting. Yeah, very exciting. And it's, it's interesting what you say about Apple and audio because they've rebranded iTunes as well to be, you know, Apple podcasts or just <laughs> podcasts, <laughs> which is great because I think aligning those three things, ebooks, audiobooks, and podcasts is, is a, you know, it's something that works very well for authors. So you can develop the brand, which is what our theme of today, um, with your podcast. And that is going to travel across, I think, to some degree, it makes it easier um, for that to happen. So yeah, uh, all good news, I think. Yeah. And I think the other thing is the interesting thing that kind of happened was this mistake where a 50% royalty rate appeared on a KDP dashboard. A few authors in America, I believe, saw it. Some people took screen prints. David Gochran got it out there. And um, in fact, he and I were just quoted in Forbes talking about it. Now, I, I had a very positive spin, which is I would 
go with the 50% royalty in order to be non-exclusive and use KDP Select. I want both worlds and I'm happy to take a lower royalty to do both. Now, maybe that will happen because with ACX, as we know, if you go exclusive with ACX, you get 40%. And if you go non-exclusive, you get 25%. So they have already done this exclusive or not with a lower, lower royalty rate. Uh, so I'm really hoping that's what it is. Um, there was lots of speculation. Some people you know, had other thoughts. Did you have any thoughts on that 50%? Well, you know, uh, John Doppler did the analysis for um, the Allies of Publishing Advice Centre, selfpublishingadvice.org. It's a really good, interesting piece and really balanced as always, as John always is. What interests me most about these things is how much um, anything to do with Amazon causes such enormous, great ripples within the community. And it is very understandable but i would love us to get to a point where amazon kind of may be thinking about doing something sometime doesn't create as much far more noise than something that is actually happening in real time in real life in in an indie author's real business and you know i think it's part of our theme of today we love amazon i just want to say that out loud very loud and clear um, Amazon's a great partner of Ally. They allowed this whole thing to get started. They're a fantastic, innovative company in loads of ways. They're not a perfect company by any means, but for indie authors, Amazon's presence has been hugely positive. And whether, you know, whatever you feel about the company, that is an undeniable fact. However, complete uh, reliance on Amazon is not a good business model. We've long argued that and will continue to. And, you know, I, I think you see it with these panics, you know, Amazon turns over and the whole community goes crazy and spends a, a lot of time and creative energy mm. um, analyzing and reacting, responding and fighting and, you know, opinionizing and so on. I don't think it's, it's I think it's a sign of, of dis-ease in the community. And I would love to see a maturing whereby we realize it's not the only game in town. There are many ways to, to reach your reader, which is essentially what we're talking about, and make a living as a writer, which is long-term sustainable and sustaining of you and of readers and mm. of fiction and literature and writing in general. Yeah. Big and rant, big speech. And this is, yeah, but this is uh, further exacerbated by the new author earnings report, which is our final news item, uh, which, it, you know, basically it goes into a very long report because they haven't done one for kind of nine months. Uh, so lots of inter interesting things. But uh, Dean Wesley Smith posted a great article saying it should not be author earnings because it is literally just Amazon.com US sales uh, for ebooks and print books. Now, author earnings are not just amazon.com ebooks and print books. Um, it really, it's so much more than that. I mean, I calculated that that would be, that Amazon in total is something like 9% of my author earnings. And, you know, uh, it, so it's kind of crazy to think that the things that were posted on there give the impression that that is author earnings and you know you and I again we do fiction non-fiction we, we you know we have sponsorships we have speaking we have memberships we have patreon we have all these different things uh go into what an author makes from their writing so yeah um any other comments on author earnings I agree a hundred thousand percent and I think you know it has to be taken on board by authors and the model needs to change people need to realize that there are all sorts of ways to earn income as an author and that you begin with thinking about your reader and what your reader needs and wants and expects of you and also what you want the effect that you want to have on that reader and put out into the world and then you think about all the different ways in which you can make that happen and you think long term you think five years ten years not just because writing books is not a short-term thing so i i really honestly feel that a lot of the people not everybody by any means but a lot of the people who are experiencing short-term you know current success on the one 
outlet model will in two or three years time find that that ha isn't sustainable, hasn't sustained them. And while they may make very good money in the short term, in the long term, it, it, it doesn't work, I don't think. And that will be the, the lessons of history, I think. Um, but also what authors do, you know, as authors, we write books and, you know, it's a long term endeavor. It takes a long time to write a good book. And um, I mean, a long term in terms of developing your craft to be able to do that well and to continue to reach readers and to become the kind of, of author that people look forward to your book and they want the next one. And, and it goes on over the years rather than catching a trend, I think, is something that we're trying to crack. But in the meantime, there are many different ways to make money and there are lots of different models that, that writers can follow. And, uh, you know, harnessing ourselves to one model, I think, is a really bad idea. Mm. Which leads on to our topic, which uh, talking about the rise of personal branding for authors. And uh, I think that this is important because, as you say, like, having these multiple streams of income actually works if you develop a personal brand, which is your recognizable name, uh, like Orna Ross is separate to the Alliance of Independent Authors, Joanna Penn is different to JF Penn, is different to Penny Appleton, <laughs> is different to the Creative Penn, to be honest, you know, my website. But each of those brands, um, and let's just point out what brand is. Brand is a promise to the reader or the customer so you know the brand of the creative pen is a positive spin on the world of self-publishing independent author independent creative entrepreneur that's my brand as the creative pen um so why it so talk about Orna Ross, because you've had some interest. I mean, Orna Ross isn't even your name. So you can talk about personal branding and how you've built Orna Ross and how you've decided what goes under that umbrella. I think of it slightly differently. And even though Orna Ross isn't my name, I think Orna Ross and Anya McCarthy, which is my name, um, are very aligned in terms of values and, and so on. So there isn't a huge gap between, you know, the brand in inverted commas and the person who's doing the writing. I think it's much, it's it's very interesting when you get somebody like you who do, has different brands and different kinds of things that they do and put different names out there. But for me, it's it's very much about understanding, as you say, a brand is just, a, is just another word for what it, the effect, I think, is how I think of it, you're trying to have on the reader. So um, Penny Appleton will be having a, a completely different effect and target market and micro niche within which you will operate than um, Joanna Penn when she's writing author guides, for example. And that's that much is clear and obvious. But what, as authors, most authors are not even a brand in that sense. They haven't thought about branding in that way. They come to writing as a person and they are building you know, their books and they care a lot about their books. They may not even think all that much about a reader when they're starting off. So it's it's a slow development from kind of start writing your first book to beginning to think of yourself as a brand. And it's a crossover that a lot of authors are not maybe particularly comfortable with. Um, maybe more comfortable just thinking about what is the effect that I, you know, as a person, I'm trying to have on the reader and how do I represent that? So if it's something that an effect I'm trying to have, obviously it's something that's important to me as a person, then how does that link in with the kind of person that I am and what I'm doing day to day? And for me, building that personal brand, if you want to call it that, or building that reader connection, if you want to call it that, is about sharing what you're doing as you do it. So sharing your process. And I hold my hand up as somebody who, you know, is very, isn't very good at that and is constantly trying to do that in a better way. I've started daily blogging again, which is something I used to do some years ago, and I'm loving that. I find that is my best way in, and I have plans around how I'm going to develop that in this year. 2018 for me is about that. It's learning to do, um, I'm thinking of it in two terms, pitching and dispatching. So a pitch is kind of where I'm trying to link up with somebody that I think I can uh, work with to take something out into the world. But a dispatch is just me, what I do at home, kind of private stuff that I have, I'm not good at sharing and that I think people 
it it helps people to know what you stand for if you share something so i'm challenging myself to kind of pitch something every day and dispatch something every day and that's kind of new for me i'm also doing a workshop once a month and a free online workshop once a month with um on the go creative books because i think again that will help to um, people to understand what they are about and even if they never read the books for, for some of those ideas and the effect that I want those books to have to circulate out into the world so for me it's it's, it's in that arena and it's about you as a person not being a bot not being a you know somebody who kind of just uh, is trying to fire stuff off and um, I, you know, brand and these words, they can be quite off-putting for authors, I think. But if we think about it in terms of the effect that we're trying to have in a reader's mind and heart, I think it might be an easier way in for some people. Mm. Well, I think about it, you know, we're in a very busy space and, you know, we talked a bit about KDP Select. There are more and more and more books arriving every day. Some of them will be written by bots very soon. Um, and it's very hard to know who to care about. And this is why I think personal branding is something to embrace in the same way that we've embraced independent authors. You know, I think personal brand is important for standing out in a very, very crowded market. So, um, you know, why would you read one of my thrillers? Well, maybe because you heard me talk about it on my podcast podcast maybe you've been listening to my podcast for years and then you you're like oh yeah I want to read a thriller oh yeah she has a thriller um this is why I think the idea of no like and trust is so important it's caring it's a bit like in fiction you have to set up a character that people care about before you then blow them up or something so that people actually care what happens it's why there's a problem with people giving to anonymous charities so you have to put a person a face there and so for me the idea of personal branding is your face your like you put a haiku a haiku on instagram every day i think every day right well not every day but Almost yeah every i do day. i do lots of days yeah and i put you know you put pictures on um i know it's hard to do video but my big shift in 2018 is going really focusing much more on youtube i've used youtube as a passive vehicle uh, i've put my podcast on it and various other bits and bobs since 2009 <laughs> But in the last week or so of putting up short videos, um, it, it, the engagement has just has gone up. The subscribers have gone up. The ad revenue has gone up um, from going from 45 minutes to seven minutes. And with me to, and putting my face on the thumbnail, people want to connect with people. And I know this is so hard because as introverts, we want to hide behind the screen. But I can't see what how else we can do this when AI is going to be creating more and more content as well as people. There are lots of authors writing a book a month now. But for me, that's not sustainable or something I even want to do. So how am I going to stand out? And, you know, I mentioned the age of decreasing social media. As we talk in January 2018, Mark Zuckerberg has said he's going to fix Facebook. And part of that is decreasing the, the organic reach even more. So you either have to pay for advertising or to push your book on people, or you have to attract your readership. And that may be not through reading. It might be through listening. It might be a podcast. It might be visual through YouTube. Um, there are lots of ways. It might be pictures on Instagram. Uh, there are lots and lots of ways to build a personal brand through giving useful, entertaining, inspirational stuff that leads people to your multiple streams of income. Yes, one of. And I think that's the important thing. I think sometimes when, again, when we talk like this, that it can seem frightening to people and, you know, you, you name Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and people think they have to do all of those. And it's absolutely not about that. It's about selecting, selecting your medium and also selecting what it is that you want to put onto that medium. And that's where you need to get clear about the effect that you're trying to have or the the influence that you want to to create in the world or whatever it is that you're and get clear about your motives for writing and and all of those things and and I like the way having to do this as a as an indie author makes you think about these things because they're important and uh, writing in a vacuum where you don't really understand what it is you're you're doing is not as satisfying creatively or personally and the other 
big component, of course, of a personal brand is story. What is your story and what has brought you here and why why these books, why this genre, why this micro niche, why this particular facility, why YouTube and not, you know, whatever it is, there's a story behind the books that you're creating and why you chose to create them. And you may not even know what that is. Um, it's one of the things in the Go Create Method is about kind of finding out more about yourself and about your own story and your own growth and where books come into that. And then the third thing, of course, is the reader. It takes a great reader to make a great book. You need people who get you and get what you do in order. Lots of people won't. It's always a numbers game with writing. Lots of people won't understand what you're trying to do. They won't like your writing style, you know, da, da, da. it doesn't matter. That's fine. It's about finding those people who do get you. And the way in which you do that is, as you so rightly say, you attract them. And how you attract them is you actually put yourself out there. And you find a way as an author that allows you to put yourself out there while still allowing the deep work to happen. So it can't be something that jeopardizes the deep work that is necessary for a book to be made. And for some people, you know, they need to go deeper for, and longer than others. Um, but you need to find an integration. And that's not easy. But nobody said being an author was going to be easy. <laughs> and nobody said being an indie author was going to be easy either. And it might look easy um, when you see somebody, uh, you know, doing it, uh, doing a certain thing that looks Oh, you know, that, that's just easy. It's not. It's never easy. It's it's actually challenging. And that's why you chose it, actually. You could have done yeah. something easier with your life. Yeah. you get, I mean, it is much easier to have a day job. Got to say that. But the, I think uh, my last point on personal branding um, is consistency over time. I get emails every day saying, how do I, you know, make X amount of money? And I'm like, yeah, do you, the, you know, I won't, you know, my first book, Career Change came out 10 years ago. I'm just revamping the 10 year anniversary version. I mean, it, that's crazy. I've had the Creative Pen uh, nearly 10 years now, 10 years this December, I've, you know, podcasting, nine years of podcasting. I mean, these things are crazy. And consistency over time is so important. And another thing I wanted to say was be careful what brand you choose. So I, the creativepen.com was my third blog because the other two were not going to last. And what's so interesting is I could pivot to become a painter, I could be an illustrator, I can be um, you know, write a screenwriter, and the creative pen will still fit me. And it's interesting because in the last week, Johnny, Sean and Dave over at the Self Publishing Podcast have announced the end of SPP and they're becoming the story studio. And what I think anything with a word that you, doesn't define you anymore in your title, in your URL. Um, that's why you should generally use your name or some version of your name that doesn't hem you in. Because if you think it's going to take at least 10 years or the rest of your life to find what your brand is, then you don't want to be starting again. And I've seen so many people have to start again and again and again because they've changed direction, they've set up another website, and they've disappeared because it takes time. So again, you have on a Ross, that again can be anything you like. But um, what are your thoughts on consistency over time? Consistency over time that a, a, a container, uh, this is how I think of it, a container that's big enough to hold what you're likely to become while small enough for people to clearly understand what it is they're getting, you know. And I think author, the word itself, allows for that. You can, as an author, go in lots of different directions, write in different genre. OK, it's not the best way to make money and have it develop a very clear brand, but you can do that under one author name and readers will some readers will follow you from one type of book across into another kind of book. In these days of, of digital segmentation, though, it probably makes a lot of sense to, to segment your, your, you know, if you do like I do, nonfiction, poetry, fiction, author guides of two, you know, two different kinds of nonfiction breaks down in, into two different um, kinds of guides. It, um, it possibly makes sense to segment that if you have the energy um, and time if you're starting off from the beginning. Don't, though, do what so many beginner writers do. We see this again and again in the first book. The title of the first book, it becomes the website and the Facebook that, that account. That was my first website. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> it's very common. It's a very common thing. And you can understand that I came into doing this. I already had written a few books, so I knew, you know, you, you, I knew about that. But if you're starting off, when you're starting off, your first book is so important to you. So, but it it is, and I mean, this must be about the fifth time we've said this in the in this half hour, it is not a short term thing becoming a successful author so yeah make make it big enough to hold everything you might be and it might be also the kind of readers you want you know that i think that's probably um it's really good if you know you are a one track person um and that you are going to stay within a certain micro niche of readers and they have again if they have if there's an identifiable sort of category um in the reading world for those readers you could make that your website address if it's still available um but yeah i'm generally speaking for an author a name is a good choice because it gives you that personal touch in a digital age yeah okay so uh we are rounding up so what's coming in the next month Next month is get ready for um, London Book Fair, um, finishing off a white paper on the blockchain for Ally and for myself and the Go Creative First book in ebook, hopefully. Fantastic. And I am writing, I'm actually doing a nonfiction book on uh, how to write a nonfiction book. <laughs> it's very meta. It's just, I get, you know, you get so many questions all the time on the same stuff and I don't have a book on it yet. So I'm working on that and I'm doing another course, uh, basically doing a lot more video. So lot, lots more YouTube as well as um, video courses and also starting the next arcane novel. So busy, busy. Oh, and I'm also going to the 20 books to 50K conference. Uh, so I will give a bit of an overview of that in our next show because uh, a lot of the Alliance members are going. So um, yeah, fantastic. Any closing remarks or we'll uh, head off? I think we the one thing I would say on our theme of the day is that don't put any more time into anybody else's um, website, and that includes Mark Zuckerberg's, <laughs> or uh, and than you do into your own. Your website is your home on the internet, and that's what you should be putting the most time into, whatever that means for you, in whatever way you're choosing to reach your readers build that up. We'll talk again about going direct and how, how that is becoming more and more important. But yeah, put, put more time into your own website than you do into any other social media. Yeah, totally agree. All right, everyone, happy writing, publishing, marketing, making a living, and we'll see you next month. See you next time. <laughs>